with a few things about what you can take out of this and what you can't. The, the first point to make is that well, I'm talking about work that's been done by a group of uh, a group uh, a group of at least 60 people. So if you find anything wrong, it's not my fault. It's the other 59. Uh, the second thing to say is that, uh, as you 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 come to see, it's work that we've uh, we, we that we started about two years back, and we're just starting to get uh, to get the data. So all all that that I'm really presenting is uh, s uh, some of the ideas uh, behind the research and uh, some of the first uh, the. Uh, some of the first impressions of the findings that we uh, that we starting to see. So the, the the main problem that we're trying to deal with is that if you look at employment uh, uh, data in the um, in uh, in the last while uh, across the globe, I think it's clear that that most um, most of the job creation uh, is in the informal economy. And the, the most uh, the most recent sort of uh, uh, data that we have suggests that uh, that that uh, um, that's something around half of total of uh, uh, total employment in the uh, non agri sector uh, comes from the informal economy, and this. Numbers unsurprisingly somewhat somewhat larger in Africa uh, than it is elsewhere. Uh, but if we think about uh, about stories about growth, about about structural transformation uh, in the Af uh, in the African setting, and 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 this uh, came clear to, clear, um, clear to me also. In, in some of the sessions this morning, is that you don't you you, you hear a, 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 a lot about exports, about the uh, uh, commodity boom. There's lo lo lots of work around social protection in Africa, but none, none of the growth the growth stories really focused on the informal e on uh, on the informal economy. And, and what the paper is trying to do is to really say, well, why is this so, and and what about the African growth story uh, can we tell uh, uh, from views from the inf from the informal economy? And and I guess the point that I'm trying to 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 make is that most of the m models that that try to explain growth in Africa um, either ignore the informal economy completely. Or else, uh, capture the informal economy in a way that is that is n not really consistent with the sort of picture that we see at the at the m m m micro level, and and I think that that that, that this is uh, that this is something that is really really important because the 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 bulk of the economy that we see in Africa is is not really being seen by those who make choices about. Uh, 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 um, policies. So, how do these models then tend to to sort of capture the informal economy? If you if you look at the growth, the growth in Africa, the growth, the growth in developing countries stories, you you sort of tend to see the informal economy uh, sometimes in the in 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 the models that we use, and the, the sort of bulk. Of them tend to 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 come from a, a multi-sector approach, and 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 the the, the 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 sorts of things that you see in in the models is a view that would say, well, we we need something to distinguish the formal economy from the informal economy, and 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 in that work, it, it sort of tends to be one of those six things. That is the key distinction between the formal economy and the informal economy. So the thing that you see the, the most is that is, is, is that these dual sector models would say uh, that we have a sort of part of the economy that we would we would think of as traditional, and a part of the 
of the economic system that we, we, uh, that we, uh, we would think of as the modern part, and, and that's really the distinction between formal and informal. Or so something that you see a lot of as well is a view that, 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 that would say you have an, a, a sort of part of the economy where the laws have some sort of bite, and you have a part of the economy where the laws don't uh, kind of really have any impact at all, and people don't pay, t pay t taxes, etc. So that's really the distinction between, between the formal and the informal economy. Uh, so so it, 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 it sort of tends to be one of those six things that is the, the, uh, the main factor uh, between something that we, that we would think of in these models as the, uh, as the formal sector and, and then something else as the informal sector. So what sort of really li lies behind these models is one of four things that we've... Uh, that we've called myths about the informal economy. So if you, if you think about the traditional modern distinction, what's, what's really being said is that, the, is that the informal economy is not sort of part of the modern sector, and that's why we're going to have it as a sector on its own. Uh, um, oh. Or else it would be something like, like three, which would say that those in the informal economy are there because they're trying to hide from some law. So they, uh, they're trying to evade taxes or they're trying to, they're trying to evade laws on, on sort of business registration or there's something that they hide from and that's really what, what, what lies behind uh, behind these, uh, uh, the, the, the models that we, that we tend to use. So it's, it's, it's largely one of these four myths that, 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 that really informs the bulk of the thinking on the informal economy. Um, so if you, if you sort of think about what's, what's really going on, most of these models simply sim simply add on the informal economy, and then the, the sort of models uh, kind of st stirred up in the usual way, and 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 and, and there's, uh, there's 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 the, the so the key the the main question that we that we're uh, uh, um, trying to think through in this project. Is, is do these models sufficiently sort of capture w w what is going on in this, in, in this part of the economic system where the bulk of the people tend to be? The models uh, tend to be extremely, uh, extremely elegant and they, they tend to be extremely, uh, extremely parsimonious, but do they really tell us what is going on on the ground? Uh, so the work that that, uh, uh, that we doing uh, in those cities. Uh, so it's 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 work that's spread throughout the world. It's work that's uh, that we're doing in three sectors. So we, we're looking at street vending. We're looking at at the waste picking sector, and we're looking at home based work. And in each one. One of those instances, we were working closely with a with a member-based organisation. So, so there's a, there's a uh, in each case there's an organisation that is organising the workers, and we working really closely with that organisation. And the 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 the, the 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 main issue behind the research is we 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 sort of were wanting to understand. Uh, 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 three, three, three broad drivers. We, we, we sort of call them drivers. So we, we, we want to know how the, the models in the, the models and the practices in uh, in the whole economic space, uh, how models around urban, uh, urban planning, and how sectoral issues get. 
uh, uh, get, get transmitted through a, a sort of a, a, a number of institutions, um, and how does that impact then on the, on the lives of those who work in the informal economy? Uh, the, the methods that we're using is, is a sort of, sort of mixture of qualitative and quantitative. So we've done fo uh, we've done 15 focus groups uh, of five each in in each one of those sectors and cities, uh, and we're really using the qualitative stuff to to, to sort of delve into those um, those four broad areas. So it, it, it's, sort of, it's sort of telling us about what are these driving forces, um, what's the sectoral issues, uh, which are the key institutions, and, and, and sort of how do they um, 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 how do they engage with the informal economy? Um, and and there's there's a set of tools that uh, that explores. Uh, What's the economic? What's the what's what's the sort of economic uh, economic output of the workers? Uh, we also have a quantitative survey, we, 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 which is exploring exploring the household uh, issues of assets. Uh, it explores the enterprise, so we ask all sorts of questions about uh, on how does your enterprise operate, what's your output, uh, uh, things like how do you determine your price, um, how much of that price is informed by, by a price in the formal sector and things of that sort. Um, and we're going to track the same group, uh, the same group, at two points in time. So we've done the first round, and we'll go uh, back to the same respondents uh, to get the same, inf uh, the, same in um, the same information in 2014. So I want to share with you uh, some of the first impressions uh, that we've got from the first round uh, of the data. So go, go back to the myths. One of the myths is this idea that we have a dual economy, that, that, uh, that there's a formal sector and, and, and there's an informal sector, and the two don't, uh, uh, don't really engage all, all that much. Uh, um, I'll, I'll, I'll sort of tell you a bit about what the first round of the data is uh, 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 telling us about some of these economic issues, and I'll tell you a bit about what our first rounds uh, uh, telling us about issues of, of, of sort of taxation, hiding from tax, etc. Uh, it's a it's a, l a large amount of, of sort of data that um, that we have, and I could I could sort of talk for three days about it, but I'm I'm just going to uh, give you a few a few impressions on those three issues. Uh, so, so the first the first issue is is uh, if we look at the households. Uh, how much of, uh, of, 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 the, of the livelihood strategy in those households uh, tends to be determined by, uh, um, um, by work in the formal sector and work in the informal sector. So do households uh, tend to combine uh, some sort of income from the formal sector and some sort of income from the informal sector? And you can see that that, that, that uh, uh, um, that from these these numbers that are that 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 there's a a large impact of 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 sort of households combining uh, uh, that 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 that, that uh, 
uh, um, that the households combine work in the formal sector with work in the informal sector. Sector. So, um, um, uh, 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 among our respondents, there's a there's a there's a, there's a sort of there's a sort of dual strategy in the household where there would be someone working in the informal in the informal economy, someone else in the formal sector, and and and, and s uh, s uh, um, some amount as well with with. Uh, with 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 with, with an, another member of the household in the informal economy as well um, we 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 ask the respondents to to sort of tell us where they're buying their goods from so what's what's the the sort of nature of the link between where you source your your goods and again, you can see a, a sort of fairly uh, large flow, sort of back to the formal sector. Although there's a there's a sort of, sort of larger integration with the informal sector. Uh, using the qualitative uh, uh, tools, we can see some of the so so. Uh, this is a flow diagram from from one of the one of the focus groups, uh, and you can't see too clearly. But but what what so so uh, this would be a group of five workers, and 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 we can track which other sectors in the in uh, in the whole economic system that they that that they uh, uh, um, link up to. And you can see food, uh, uh, large amounts of clothing, uh, um, uh, uh, food. So it's, it's what, 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 what we sort of get out of it is an extremely sort of sort of complex set of of links throughout throughout the throughout the, throughout the whole economic system. Uh, this is a spatial. Um, a map of the of the of the of the types of of of, of, of work that we saw um, 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 that we saw in in Nakuru, and you can see sort of large spreads out into the spatial spatial setting of the city. Uh, what, what, what sort of comes out clearly from our quantitative research is that 59% of our street vendors uh, tend to trade extremely closely to a formal sector retailer. And, and one of the issues that we're exploring is, is what does this, this sort of tell us about the the, the nature of the links between the formal sector and the informal sector. Is the one driving the other out, or uh, should we think about it as, as, as some sort of integrated relationship where when, when one, part of, the, one uh, part of the economy grows, when the formal sector grows, uh, does the informal sector grow as well? And we're starting to explore some of these issues. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm rapidly running out of time, so just a few things on the growth on the growth issues. We have a, a quite diverse growth uh, growth settings in in the five cities where we where we've we've, we've looked at the street um, at the street vending sector. So it's it's a it's it's a it's a sort of mixture of things. Okay, I'll, I'm I'm going to have to to stop now. So I'll just just sort of tell you about this. What one what we ask each group to do is to tell us what the main economic force, uh, forces were that shaped their. Uh, 
and shape their incomes, and then to rank them. So uh, a high n n n number there means a large n number of our groups um, rank that as, as one of the top three one of the top three one of the top three constraints uh, and you can see um, rising prices is a big issue for, for most of these groups uh, if I if I if I if I uh, so so uh, prices going up on on their own isn't necessarily a problem if you can can pass on that price increase to the final consumer so a, a large num number of our respondents uh, seem to be suggesting that they can't pass on the full price impact so they they uh, they, they there's a, there's a, a rise in their input uh, 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 um, um, costs, and they can't really pass on the full price impact uh, that, um, that, um, down the chain. I think I'd, I'd best stop here. I have a few slides, but I'd, I'd be stealing someone else's time. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, let's give a round of applause to our presenter. Uh, is there any immediate reactions?